Nico is a professional photographer, published writer, blogger, and creative director. He aspires to inspire through his motivational talks and blog posts, and continues to be a ray of positive light to others through his work. Whether in the studio or on the mic, Nico gives everything, he does his all, and that is what makes him the inspiring individual that he is today. Hi guys and welcome to another episode of In Love With Me, where we feature inspiring individuals who will share their amazing stories. I am your host, Mafe Yunon Belasco, and for this series, our topic is being empowered during quarantine. For this episode, we have an empowered man, professional photographer, blogger, writer, to motivate us and to take action. So without further ado, let's welcome the amazing Nicholas John Edward Velasco. Hi, Nico. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thanks for that introduction and for my full name. <laughs> of course, you guys know I am a proud mom of this guy. And of course, I had to have him on here because not only has he inspired me, He's been such a great leader to his siblings and um, a great leader to his friends, his network. And I wanted to share him with you guys today. So Nico, you know, I know we're gonna be chatting like we, you know, like I see every day. So yeah. please share with everyone what you've been up to during this quarantine. And before that, actually share with everyone why you are the empowered man that you are today. Okay, so when I think about empowered, um, I, I don't think about um, my journey so much, but I think about um, having a strong support system or a group of people that believe, or that believe in me, and also believing in myself. So um, my journey of empowerment, or my passion for photography rather, started when I was young. Um, I tell the story to a lot of people. I was sitting at a salon waiting for my mom to finish up a treatment. And um, I didn't have anything to do, but I, I had my phone and a piece of chocolate with me. And I thought, why not take a, take a picture of this chocolate by the window? And that's what I did. And something about this picture got my creative juices flowing. And I guess from that moment on, I just decided to be as creative as possible when it came to taking pictures. And so I would post these pictures on Instagram and I would get, <laughs> my pictures were, um, aesthetically pleasing with all the nice filters and the backgrounds and stuff and a lot of people would take notice of this and I would get comments from people. Um, one comment in particular struck, struck me and it was from a friend of my parents, his name is Sherwin, and he said, uh, tell your parents that you want to take photography classes this summer because you've got the eye. And this comment struck me in a way that it helped me realize that I could actually take photography to the next level. Because at the time I was just taking pictures uh, with my phone. And so my parents gave me their old 500D that they barely used, usually when we went on vacations or whatever. And so I started tagging along with them to events. And uh, before I knew it, I was taking pictures at you know, company launches, uh, fashion shows, basketball games, and just tagging along with them anywhere, uh, everywhere. And from the experiences that I've had, I saw that photography actually was something that I wanted to pursue. And so I decided to pursue it. And I'm just grateful for all the support that I've got from um, everyone that's helped me throughout this year. And you know, such a young age, you are such a leader. You know, I'm so proud of you, Nico. I'm gonna keep saying that throughout this whole feature. Um, where do I begin? You know, I have known Nico since he was, I think, two years old. Yeah. And I've seen him grow in, in such a powerful man. 
with a powerful voice. But share with everyone where it first began where you did you didn't even have you didn't even believe that you had that voice yeah um actually growing up i was a really shy kid um mm -hmm. a lot of the time now I, I guess you could say that i still am sometimes but um yeah before i just i like to think of my journey of coming out of my shell and becoming the person that i am as just this journey of self-growth um and that is thanks to a lot of mentors and people in my life that um, helped me get out of my shell. And of course, one of the biggest ones was uh, my parents who continuously every day helped me to improve myself. But I, I really was a shy kid and I didn't, I didn't believe in myself before. But I think, you know, after so long and after all these experiences, you really come to find that you are capable and you are worthy. And that's one, one thing that I continuously remind myself every day. And I, I think, you know, just by your actions, a lot of people look up to you. Um, you know, your siblings are always inspired of what you do. Um, but I know that uh, there have been some challenging times in your life. Um, you know, we can talk about, you know, the, the, the most, um, I guess, special person in your life. Uh, right, your dad. Um, your dad is obviously a personality. He he uh, paved the way for the family, and you know was uh, so successful in his career. Um, and he is continuously sharing those those experiences with you. But you had um, a challenge through uh, what other people thought. Can you share with everyone how you dealt with that? Okay, so I guess you know growing up, I mean, my dad. He was a professional basketball player in the PBA, or right, the Philippine Basketball Association. And of course, you see all these pro basketball players and you think, wow, they're kids. They must be so talented. They must want to follow in their footsteps or you know, they're the next big thing. And I would get a lot of comments from people um, telling me, you know, oh, I can't wait to see you on TV or I can't wait to see you um, follow in your dad's footsteps. And of course, that pressure kind of got to me a little bit. And um, as you can see in these pictures, I'm not as tall as my dad. I was not um, that <laughs> high work passed on to me. So, uh, but anyways, um, going back, I think that, you know, I was pressured at first and a lot of the time I still am, but I, I like to see it as a challenge to, uh, I take it on as a challenge. And I think, you know, how can I look at this? Um, it's not necessarily a negative, I mean, but mm -hmm. how can I look at this and take it as an opportunity for growth? Mm -hmm. So I decided, you know, maybe I'm not cut out for basketball or mm -hmm. I don't have the height for it. I don't have the, the skill set that a lot of people expect me to have. Mm -hmm. But I have other talents that I can use and showcase. And um, yeah, so I just decided to pursue my other talents. And I also I play basketball, too. It's a fun mm -hmm. thing one thing that my siblings and I used to like to do, and I played varsity, but I really enjoy photography, writing, and everything between. But the, the best thing that you forgot to mention is that you are a basketball coach in our BUSA, uh, at Belasco and the Mid Skills Academy, and I've seen you also um, express your leadership skills there, and it's been such an amazing uh, um, to witness you and Mike become leaders and teach the youth because there's so many young people that look up to you guys. Um, do you want to share when you uh, coach with uh, um, kids with special needs? Yes, um, for, for a while, we worked with uh, students from One World School of Autism. And that was an experience for me, partially because I was young at the time and also because just working with people with special needs is, um, I would, yeah, it's kind of a challenge, but it's also interesting in a way that, you know, you get to see these different aspects there are to learning. And a lot of the time, these, these students that we'd have, um, you know, there were different levels of autism. So there were some that would actually pay attention in class and actually do the drills. And then there were some that wouldn't. And of course, you know, we, we didn't want to push too hard, so we would push them. We would make sure that they were, they wanted to do it. But I think it was an experience for me to uh, be able to work with students that you know have different 
my different ways of going about things and mm -hmm. learning the different um, levels there are to autism helped me appreciate it more. Mm -hmm. So another thing is, you know, I wanted to express is your 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 talent as a motivation speaker. How did that come about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well that that came about when I I was approached by one of my homeschool friends um, mm -hmm. about three or four years ago, and he wanted me to speak about time management at a homeschool convention um, called Kickstart. So mm -hmm. I, I, at the time, I was extremely nervous. I even thought about turning it down because I was not the type of person who, you know, at the time, I wasn't the type of person who thought that I could speak or I'd, just, I'd have trouble with speaking in general in public. Mm -hmm. So I, I talked to my parents about it, and you guys encouraged me actually to do it, and I'm glad that I did because it helped mm -hmm. me. The first time that I went on mm -hmm. uh, to talk, I wasn't perfect. I was far from perfect, mm -hmm. but it helped me, you know, see how much of an impact that I could have through my using my voice and mm -hmm. um, sharing my thoughts. So. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like you said, you're not perfect. Uh, I do remember the first time that I um, encouraged you to, to go on stage. Um, that was for photography workshop. Do you remember that? Yes. Um, so this <laughs> photography workshop that I did um, with my good friend and mentor, Duke Rodriguez, was for Century City Mall. And um, mm -hmm. it was interesting because it was, well, I was only about maybe 14 or 15 at the time. And I was teaching all of these, you know, experienced photographers. And um, it was it was an experience for me because I was really nervous. This, this was my first ever time speaking to any uh, group or a group of this size at least. And it was interesting because um, I was really nervous. And when I got up on stage, I I thought, you know, these people, they're, they're looking at me and I'm really scared. Like, I don't know if I'm saying the right thing or if I'm doing the right thing or if they're really even interested in what I have to say mm -hmm. because I'm so much younger. Mm -hmm. But um, I just remember, you know, seeing my family's faces and um, that kind of reassured me in a way. But of course, being the young um, photographer and not even close to being experienced in speaking, mm -hmm. I was really affected by the fact that I didn't perform at the level that I wanted to perform at. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, um, I'm sure mom, my mom will bring it up. <laughs> oh, I won't bring it up. So <laughs> no, if it's OK with you, I will bring it up because it's okay. one of those memories that you will not forget. And I think yeah. it will it made you stronger. I mean, mm -hmm. voice it out now. How many talks have you done ever since then? More than what? 20 or 10? Something like that. I don't know. Imagine that, you know, and how old are you? A lot of adults can attest that they haven't even done one single talk in front of possibly their family, you know? So um, I could, you, you know, I could admit, guys, that I did um, cheer. I was the biggest cheerleader. I was the biggest fan of Nico and my children to, you know, get out of their comfort zone. I believe in, you know, if you take the risk, if you uh, challenge yourself, then you will never know um, what that experience will feel like. And for Nico back then, um, I I and, me, and Nick expressed how proud we were of him because he was able to go on stage regardless of how scared he was, he did it, he accomplished it. And there was so many great uh, positive feedback after that. Um, and so we looked for him. We're like, oh, where's Nico? You know, those people want to take photos with him. They want to say thank you. We couldn't find him. And then finally, I think one of his siblings said, oh, I think he's in the bathroom. So we waited, we waited, we waited. We're like, what the, what is he doing in there? And we thought, okay, maybe he's doing something weird, you know? But then um, when he finally opened the door, his eyes were red. And we were like, what's wrong? And, you know, Nico as perfectionist at such a young age, he's, he was crying. He cried because he said what? <laughs> I said that I didn't think I did good enough. Yeah, and that he made a lot of mistakes and that um, there, like he wasn't, uh, you know, he, it's like he, he, he felt like he wasn't in the right place to teach others. 
And so that's where uh, Nick and I empowered him and told him, no, you did great. Regardless what age you are, you are able to teach and inspire others. Um, like I was saying uh, to, to everyone uh, normally is that being a, a blogger is not easy, right? Being a writer. And you started blogging when? When I was about 13. And you inspired me to blog, you know? Um, for, for Nico, I always tell him, you are always starting a trend or you are starting things that are very inspiring. Like your story about taking a photo of a chalk nut. It was chalk nut. And uh, putting in different lighting and things like that. He learned on his own. And that's something that, um, you know, I appreciate with you because uh, not only am I inspired, but your siblings are. And um, also now you're, the, you're in college, you started even an org. Can you tell us about that and how you became um, a leader there? Yeah, so um, I was approached by one of my friends who was running the org before, actually. Um, at, I go to Thames International and at Thames there are four orgs. So, um, he asked me if I wanted to take over the Thames Communicators. And I, I honestly wasn't sure if the role was for me I, because, you know, there was so much, I saw the, the workload and I saw everything, but I decided to take it on as a challenge and mm -hmm. I saw it as an opportunity for growth. So I, yeah, I took it on and for a year, I led the Thames Communicators. I organized events for them, activities, and even throughout the quarantine period, we had online activities. So mm -hmm. we were able to stay connected. And I'm glad to say that, you know, at the end of my year as the Thames Communicators president, I was able to help a lot of people elevate their creativity and take it to the next level. And that's mm -hmm. part, probably the most rewarding part of the whole thing. And I'm sure we, we give a shout out to all the Thames uh, students who are listening. Um, thank you for supporting Nico, guys. Uh, he works so hard, endless uh, sleepless nights. <laughs> he is up at night making sure that you guys are okay. And you know, with that, Nico, um, please share with everyone what motivates you on making sure that others are taken care of. Um, what motivates me is really just seeing the potential in everyone, seeing. Um, like for me, for example, what other people saw in me. So mm -hmm. I see that in other people and I like to, you know, help them bring their skill set to the next level and, you know, just like what you did to me, throw them into the fire or help them, you know, realize that there's so much that they can do with what they, what they have or their skills. Mm -hmm. So that, that motivates me a lot because I see all this talent, especially in the Thames communicators, there's so much talent and really they, a lot of people just need that extra push. And so that's what I do. Exactly. Um, you know, uh, being a leader in your family, of course, you're the eldest of your siblings. How much pressure is that to to make sure that you do the right thing? Actually, it's a lot of pressure. Um, I know they're tuned in right now. Hi, guys. But um, <laughs> there's, you know, I I don't I don't like showing it to them, and I don't express it so much. But yeah, there is a lot of pressure in being the eldest sibling because, you know. Whether you like it or not, all eyes are on you, and they're going to follow your lead. Um, anyway, so I try to be the best sibling that I can be for them, um, and showing them how you know to be their best selves. And you know, I like to go through all these hardships and problems before they do, so that they can learn from what I go through before having to, you know, experience it themselves. So I think that. Being, yeah, it's being, it's a hard thing to be an older sibling, but it's also rewarding. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can attest to that because we are eldest siblings. <laughs> and, yeah, it is a challenge to, to make sure that, uh, you know, as what they say, we are the guinea pigs. So whatever we do, we, we try it out and see if it works or not. And then, you know, luckily for our for younger siblings, they, they get to do the, the right thing always at the, at the first, because we've already done that. Um, so during quarantine, Nico, um, share with everyone what you've learned new about yourself. Okay, so um, during quarantine, I learned that I, we like, we, at the beginning of quarantine, my family and I, we've been doing, we did a lot of yoga. So I learned that I actually <laughs> like to do yoga. It's not something that I, used to like doing or even thought about doing but mm -hmm. yeah yoga is one of them boxing also we have um, 
we have some gloves and a boxing, you know, punching bag at home. So I've learned that I actually like the box. Um, mm -hmm. I've also learned that, you know, anything is possible. Uh, there are no limits to, mm -hmm. you know, doing whatever you want to do. I mean, we, yeah, we're extremely limited right now because of the mm -hmm. situation, because of COVID and the lockdown. But I think it's all about finding new ways to keep yourself busy or, you know, like like what you're doing, you're having Zoom calls or you're you're staying in touch with your friends or it could be, you know, starting a blog or writing. So I like to write. I um and I, I think it's just about finding what you like to do and actually do it. And mm -hmm. that's what a lot of this quarantine has been for me and my siblings. It's just experimenting mm -hmm. with different things. Like we we work out a lot more often now that we're together more and I, I really enjoy it. So Mm -hmm. So, you know, with your career path or the, the things that you love and you know, you're passionate about being a photographer, being a writer, being a blogger, when you feel unmotivated, but then you have like a deadline to do or you're in, you're already at an event. How do you change your mindset on making sure that you are ready for it? Um, well, one thing I like to do is, well, of course, the first thing that I would do is pray and ask God for strength. Um, and then after that, I try to visualize myself actually getting it done. Mm -hmm. um, I believe you guys taught me in the law of attraction and I believe in it a lot and I carry it with me. And I like to do a lot of visualization. So mm -hmm. um, for example, like for events, you know, I always make it a point to get a certain amount of images taken before the end of, a, of the event. Mm -hmm. So I always try to, you know, of course I pray and then I, I tried to push myself and I just remind myself that I'm not really doing it for myself. It's for, there's a greater purpose towards it. So mm -hmm. I just keep pushing and I just remind myself that, you know, it's for something bigger than what I think. Mm -hmm. So going back to your photography career, you have done so many events, you've covered um, so many, uh, let's say celebrities or uh, models, uh, you know, at such a young age. Um, I know you have one that you're very proud of is uh, shooting for an international brand. Can you share with us those experiences? Yeah, so I I was able to shoot um, my first international uh, campaign or e-commerce shoot with guests. So um, it was an interesting experience for me because I was only about 17 at the time. And I just remember you telling me, get your portfolio ready because I'll be presenting it to guests. And so they, you know, I got it ready and I just ready in my mind. I tried to use the law of attraction and it worked. And, you know, I just remember getting the call and actually, you know, waiting for the shoot to happen. Of course, I was extremely nervous because it was my first big thing. And I just remember the night before I barely slept. Um, I just go over all the pegs that they wanted and actually going to the event, the, the venue of the shoot, which is at their headquarters. Mm -hmm. I was extremely nervous and walking into the room. And I remember just like thinking, wow, this is, this is it. This is guests. And I saw, I was, I'm grateful to have been able to work with some great people on set. Um, mm -hmm. you know, our models, Cassie and Kim and uh, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. And they were about, yeah, so, and Sim also, who was our hair and makeup artist. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because we were there really early in the morning and we finished mm -hmm. really late at night, mm -hmm. almost the next day. And mm -hmm. uh, we had about three days of shooting and about 100 to 200 outfits for each model. Yeah. And it was an experience for me because it was just nonstop. It was one outfit after the other and it was, it was really fun in a sense mm -hmm. that I got to experience this, um, you know, it's a, at such a young age and also with mm -hmm. such professionals and it was really, really an experience. Mm -hmm. So what would you share with, uh, you know, people your age or even younger who wants to follow your footsteps in photog photography, uh, being a blogger, um, what should they do? Uh, most especially right now, we have a lot of time. What, what should they be prepared? What should they prepare? Well, of course, if you're looking into doing something that you're not super familiar with, the first thing that you have to do is research. So I did a lot of research and um, that helped me a lot throughout my journey. And of course, there's also finding people that can help you. 
So I've had a lot of mentors, um, namely Duke Rodriguez and Cholo de la Vega, who've helped me and who've kind of set the foundation for me to learn. And I think it's really important to find, you know, a group of people that really believe in you and, um, you know, can help you take your love, your skills to the next level. So of course, yeah, first thing to do is research. Second is to trust what you feel in what you're doing. So a lot of the times when you're actually doing what you're doing, like for me, for photography, I got a lot of, um, I've experienced a lot of hardships and, you know, for, for example, I was at, um, I was covering an event and this one celebrity, I'm not going to say who it was, but she pushed me and she, because I was in her way. And of course this, this really, this, this event was at Araneta Coliseum. It was a big event, but before, way before that, I was extremely grateful to be there um, with a camera because mm -hmm. the day before this event, um, my camera just gave out on me. I don't even know what happened to it. So I had no event, I had no camera to use. And the event was um, Damian Lillard in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. in the Philippines and I just remember being heartbroken because I didn't have you know it's just it's, there's this NBA player coming the next day and I had nothing to shoot him with mm -hmm. and so um, by God's grace mm -hmm. uh, one of my titas Tita Oz was um, kind enough to lend me her camera to use mm -hmm. so I was extremely grateful to be there and mm -hmm. when we got to the event um, I was with I was on the court already and this this lady kind of pushed me and I was super affected by it. Of course, I was still grateful to be there, but it kind of got to me. And uh, so much that uh, we went to eat after and I kind of dropped all the food on the tray that I was holding. And, you know, just letting, letting things like this get to you. I think if you can learn already when you're starting out mm -hmm. and you can visualize and you can just strengthen your mind um, to let it not affect you, Mm -hmm. then you should do that already. Mm -hmm. And long story short, you know, I look back at this memory that I have and I kind of, I laugh at it because I think, you know, this was meant to happen to me for a reason. And mm -hmm. look at me now, I've grown from it. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So um, from all the events, apart from, of course, that, that, uh, that experience right there, what was the most uh, memorable? Oh gosh, there's a lot. Um, I think the most memorable one was well, one of the most fun ones that I've been to was probably the Veloci White Party that we went to together, mm -hmm. just because there was a theme to it and there was just so much happening. And um, yeah, we walked home with, with new watches also, which was great. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I really had a good time that night. Mm -hmm. You know, a uh, fun fact here, guys, you know, Nico, I would bring to events or he would get invited himself and it came to a point where we would attend an event and I was ready to go home he was like telling me ah oh, let me just say hi to my friends real quick or can I just you know mingle with them and I was like I, I saw him walk towards uh, you know the the group of people and I was just like oh my gosh he knows everyone and I don't know who is here <laughs> so it was amazing to see that um, how important is networking to you Oh, I think networking is extremely important. Um, not just for, you know, of course it has a lot to do with personal gain, but I think, you know, building a connection with someone in general, um, starting out, you know, as friends is probably best, but also mm -hmm. just keeping, staying connected with people, you know, in different industries, because you never know when you can help out that person or when they can help you. So I think it's really important to make connections. Yeah, and I have to thank, of course, uh, one of your, I'm sure a mentor of yours, who uh, you were lucky enough to intern for. You know, I have to thank her because she's such an amazing woman. Um, I have um, an interview with her also here um, on the series, so please check her out. Um, Nico, would you like to say who it is? Yeah, it's Teresa Herrera. She was actually on the episode before me. Mm -hmm. um, interning with her was really fun because, well, I was... I was even younger there. I was about 14, I think, or 15. Mm -hmm. But uh, working with her and her art company, Collective 88, was an experience for me because it's not something that I really saw myself doing. But she made it um, really fun, and I got to cover um, her events. I also got to meet a lot of 
interesting and um, experienced people in the industry. And it was really nice. Mm -hmm. I have a question here. For someone who is extremely shy, how do you network? <laughs> that actually was a lot harder for me before because mm -hmm. I was still in my shell. Mm -hmm. um, I do remember there were some instances at events where you and Dad would push me towards saying hi to this person or towards you know like a friend of yours or someone big in the industry. Mm -hmm. And I'd be extremely shy and I'd just walk over there and just be timid. But I mm -hmm. think, you know, just knowing who you are and believing in yourself and also just, you know, seeing it as, you know, everyone is human and we all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. So what, you know, we're all pretty much equal despite mm -hmm. all of the accomplishments and stuff. We're all human. So I used mm -hmm. to look at it that way. And I would just mm -hmm. go up to the person and start talking to them. And mm -hmm. that was the fun part of going to events. And now going back to your blogging, your writing, how do you motivate yourself on writing in a, a, about a certain topic? What's your, like, what's your inspiration? Well, a lot of the time for my blog, a lot of the inspiration that I get are from what I'm feeling in the moment. Uh, lately, it's been a lot about, um, well, there's been a lot of quarantine blogs, so you could, you could check them out. Um, I like. <laughs> um, so yeah, a lot of the time it's either you know experiences I've had, feelings that I've felt, or um, you know events that I've attended. I've yeah. also you know a lot of the what helps me in blogging is knowing that I'm reaching this audience. And lately, I've been doing a lot of motivational blogging. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, especially now in this time where people are struggling with their mental health and, you know, kind of having a hard time, mm -hmm. I think that, I think towards, you know, being a voice, you know, to mm -hmm. others and helping them realize that, yeah, it's okay to feel, it's okay mm -hmm. to feel sad, to let your emotions flow. But at the end of the day, what makes you a stronger person is how you carry yourself after the things that you take away from this experience. And that's what mm -hmm. I've been blogging a lot about. Mm -hmm. And I did see that you have also motivational, uh, I guess, words of wisdom on your Twitter account too. So how, did you just start that during quarantine or did you yeah. have that already? Yeah, actually I barely used Twitter before, but um, these are, I just started using it because I felt like um, it's, an out, it's an outlet that a lot of people go to and actually my Twitter feed nowadays, especially has been really negative and I wanted mm -hmm. to change that. So I want to be that, that ray of positive light to people because I know that a lot of people do need it, especially these days. Mm -hmm. um, so for, for aspiring youth or people who are watching right now, Nico, what would be your words of wisdom to them, especially at this challenging time? Well, I think, you know, yeah, these times are tough right now and there's no denying that. But I think it's important to look at this time and to really dig deep and reflect on your past experiences and whatever it is that might, you know, hinder you from being your best self. And I also think that it's it's a good time to really look into what it is you want to do that you're not doing already. Um, you know, for me, it was hard at the beginning because I, of course, like all of like everyone almost, I struggled, you know, I, I was nostalgic and I felt sad because I missed, you know, the everyday routine that I had going. But I think, you know, finding new ways to entertain yourself and to do something and using your voice, oh, you know, you have, everyone has a voice. So I believe that it's, you know, it's good to use it for the good. Mm -hmm. And do you have any uh, projects that you're working on that you can promote, maybe a photography workshop online? Yeah, actually, I um, photography workshop, we're, we're going to have one. So mm -hmm. I guess we'll post it. Um, I'll post it soon on my pages. Mm -hmm. uh, you can you can check it out. You can you can also check out my work um, on Instagram and Facebook at Nico Velasco Photography. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just and my blog is also um, nicobelasco.wordpress.com if you want to check out any of my motivational blog posts or any blog posts at all, it's all there. And obviously there's a lot of people watching you right now. I told you earlier, the world is watching you. So would you like <laughs> to give shout outs to yeah. any specific people? Yeah, I just want to shout out um, all the Thames communicators that are tuned in 
and also to family overseas um, and family here and my dad, my family. Hi, Atta, also. Um, she actually, during this quarantine period, my parents wanted us to learn how to do our own laundry and she's taught us that. And it's actually really fun. I enjoy doing it. So thank you, Atta, for showing me that. <laughs> yes, and you know who's watching also. Hi, Christian. Hey, Christian. You know, you've inspired both Nico and I. To, yes, to a lot. Work. A lot. So we'll have you on again. Um, I'll probably have Nico interview you the next time you're in here. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> going back, Nico, thank you for uh, being part of our campaign. I know that you've been uh, nervous to get on, but look, look how many people you've inspired, and you continue to inspire everyone around you. So you know, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, we are here to support you. You know, as you can see, the team is here. Um, Aubrey, Alex, Manel, you know, all your siblings are super proud of you. Uh, it's just so amazing what you're, you're doing. And I know you feel sometimes the pressure, but at the end of the day, just know that, you know, God gave you a, a powerful talent, a powerful tool to uh, encourage everyone to um, know that their lives are blessed. So, you know, uh, like Nico said, um, know yourself, you know, know your why, know your purpose, um, continue educating yourself. Um, this is the time to get online. Uh, maybe you wanted to write this, this uh, open diary that you wanted to share with the world or perhaps start a small business whatever passion that is you know um, share uh, Nico I'm sure is more than happy to answer any more questions or give advice on how he uh, is um, achieving what he is doing with his life um, things that he he does to to inspire him I think Nico maybe you can um, also share your favorite uh, motto in life or your favorite verse that you you live by um, well, my favorite thing that I live by, uh, I live by a lot of words, mm -hmm. but one of the, one of my favorites, and it's a little cliche, but it helps me a lot. It's, mm -hmm. uh, believe in yourself and you're halfway there because I think, you know, just that's the first step towards doing anything. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can have all these people that, you know, have your back and, you know, so support you and believe in you. But if you don't believe in yourself, mm -hmm. then there's no getting to where you can make it as far as you can make it with whatever it is that you're doing. So I would say, you know, believe in yourself. Yes. Thanks for that, Nico. I love you. And I'm always going to be proud of you and have your back no matter what. So to everyone watching um, in Manila and obviously um, LA where Christian is in Sydney, Australia. Hi, Izzy. Hi, um, mom and dad. Uh, you know, happy birthday to Zion. It was his first birthday. Um, to MC team, you know, Nico has been such a great leader to, to you all, and I'm so proud of that. So with that, guys, you know what it is. Actions speak louder than words, and thank you again for tuning in in another episode of In Love With Me. Love you, Nico. Love you, too. Thank you for watching and love of me series.